Corps said, open up the floodgates. Just let the water go. Where it's gonna end up, hell don't know. Rolling. Sound. Yep. Okay. Sound. Sound. Is it rolling? Ro yeah, sound. Good. Every fall, Wild River Academy leads a paddle forward expedition down a major river in the United States. We started with the Mississippi River in 2013, and we hope to do a different tributary of the Mississippi for years to come. So for this trip, we have young adults plan a base curriculum to share with K-12 schools all over the nation. Schools sign up to be river ambassador schools, which means that they have access to this curriculum, and they also agree to follow the trip. Day by day, while these expeditioners are out paddling the river, they post videos, pictures, blogs, and try to engage with students to share what's going on on the watershed. So behind us right now, you can see some smoke coming out of a smokestack. Um, that's from Minnesota Power. And this is our first time camping south of the cities and really around Minneapolis. Um, and it's a public boat launch that we're camping at, but we're starting to run into just more trash and more um, signs of city life and large numbers of people living in the place. We are 1,500 feet away from the first lock of the trip. Approaching lock. Approaching lock. <laughs> For our paddle forward expeditions, we use an educational model called adventure learning. Adventure learning basically means that we can connect with students all over the world and they can learn what we're learning while we're on an adventure even though they can't physically be present. I think this is really important because even if they don't live on the Mississippi River or the Illinois River, these are all microcosms and systems that reflect what's going on all over the world. And it's really important to learn about these urban areas that have a lot of social and environmental issues. because so we can learn a lot about the Arctic, we can learn about what's going on in the bush in Australia, but it's that much more important to learn about what's going on in your backyard and how that can represent issues that are going on elsewhere in the world. We just portaged around the potlatch dam that you see behind me. We came over the hill to the other side of the portage. We noticed that all of the rocks around here are orange. Um, we don't know what it's from or why, but it's an interesting feature and I think we're going to do some more research to try to figure that out. As we paddle down the river, we share our experiences, our stories, we take interviews of people that we meet along the way and share their stories as well with the students who are following us so that they can learn all about this watershed alongside us even though they're not physically there. Uh, do you want to just introduce yourself? Sure, I'm Gerilyn O'Connor and I'm Neighborhood Development Specialist with the City of Dubuque. Hi, I'm John Thomas. I live here in Memphis, Tennessee. I'm Jerry Ensler at the National Mississippi River Museum and Aquarium in Dubuque, Iowa. So these trips are different from following um, an expedition or say an Arctic explorer in your classroom because we try to get young adults to do these trips. I think that sends a really important message out to students because if you're a high school student following a group of college students and they're paddling two months down a river, they don't say, oh, well, they're expeditioners. That's cool, I'm gonna follow them, but I could never be them. We wanna make that accessible. Say, hey, you can do this. This is accessible for everyone. If you're a high school student, you can have the opportunity to go on an expedition with us when you're in college. Our paddle forward expeditioners learn a lot on these trips. Not only do they have to plan the trip, plan the base curriculum, go on the trip itself, but they also have to follow through, do an independent project, uh, public speak at the schools that followed them, and I believe that this semester-long program is a really great way to encompass a, a variety of skills for these students. They'll learn about environmental education, how to build a curriculum, all these things within three or four months, and I personally believe that that is an amazing experience for individual personal growth. So everybody wakes up because we hear this big tree has fallen in the woods. Kind of assumed it was pretty far away or at least farther away from our camp than right here. <laughs> We started in Minnesota. We've been on trail for 40 days.
and then have them plan their own trip, whether it's a tributary of the Mississippi, whether it's part of the Mississippi, maybe they're out for just a month. It's kind of choose your own adventure. What do you want to learn? Um, and then they'll do the adventure learning that we've been doing, posting blogs, connecting with schools, and they'll have total ownership over that, which I think is really important that you're given a lot of freedom to do what you think is the best thing mm. when you're young, especially. Um, and then get back and visit those schools, do some public speaking, share stories. There's so much in education that doesn't emphasize st stories. <laughs> um, and I, I think that experiential learning and communications are often overlooked and are skills that will help you in whatever you do for your entire life.